Hi, this is Mark Wallstrom, your host at the Legal Broadcast Network, the Settlement Channel, and the president of Wallstrom & Associates. We are perched uh, high above the city on top of the beautiful Valley Ho Hotel here in Scottsdale, Arizona. A beautiful day. I'm joined here by Matt Bracey, General Counsel of Settlement Capital from Dallas, Texas. Matt, glad to uh, have you here. You. And uh, it's our opportunity for us to discuss something that has been uh, you know, kind of a hot topic really in the settlement and legal community. It kind of came out of uh, uh, right field. Nobody expected this, but we had an opinion uh, authored by really one of the more respected uh, tax and legal commentators, uh, Attorney Robert Wood uh, of Wood and Porter out of San Francisco, California. Uh, Rob wrote a piece uh, that has been uh, originally not widely circulated, but since quite widely circulated. Uh, on the issue of factoring uh, Section 130 uh, and whether companies, uh, that would be life companies who do write annuities, might possibly be putting at risk the tax status of structured settlements through their uh, ability or their desire to commute uh, uh, cases. Now, as you know, uh, Matt, we've talked, uh, and I know you've heard some of the podcasts that we've done with Rob on this topic and other industry professionals. And what I wanted to do is take some of your time, talk a little bit about this issue from your perspective. I know you've blogged on it, you've, you've talked uh, through the internet uh, a little bit about your, your thoughts and ideas on the implication of this. As you know, there are, are certain industry commentators who feel this is a rather apocalyptic event. Uh, I don't share that view, I know you don't share that view, but why don't you just take a few minutes just, again, talk about the foundation of what Rob was discussing, sure. your perception of it, and how you think that impacted the, uh, uh, the factoring side of business. Uh, I'm glad to do it. Uh, let's take a step back for a moment and talk about the, the canvas upon which this article was painted, if you okay. will. Uh, what started happening a few years ago is that a very few number of insurance company issuers of structured settlement annuities started to uh, factor or commute or whatever terminology you want to use um, their customers' payments, and and uh, there's a question of terminology, and that's one of the points that Rob uh, Wood mentions in his article. Uh, that's why I'm not sure which term to use. Sure. Uh, but the fact is, and if you if you cut to the the bottom line, uh, essentially what these insurance companies are doing is offering to cash out uh, their customers on these. Now that raises some eyebrows initially because, uh, of course under Section 130 of the Internal Revenue Code, mm -hmm. uh, these structured settlements are supposed to be established where they cannot be commuted or accelerated. It's one of the essential uh, uh, foundational elements of a structured settlement. Right. Long ago when factoring started, uh, there was a concern that perhaps what we were doing was a de facto acceleration. Mm -hmm. uh, that turned out not to be the case. Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember that, art, that, that whole argument, yeah. Uh, right, and, and ultimately uh, the Internal Revenue Code was amended to make it clear that what we did in factoring was not in fact an acceleration or commutation. Uh, shortly thereafter, all of a sudden now comes along the insur a few, a very small number of insurance companies who started to do this, to offer this. And they, they dress it up typically in the guise of a factoring transaction. The, the point, so that's sort of the backdrop. Uh, the, one of the, the points that I got from, from uh, Mr. Wood's article, and I'm no tax lawyer, right. <laughs> so some of it goes over my head, but one of the points that I got from his article was this distinction between what factoring is, which is what we do, and what commuting is, which mm -hmm. is what he describes as what the insurance companies are doing. And they're really not the same. Right. They're not the same because at the end of the day, when we are engaged in factoring from the perspective of the insurance company the same payments are made um, they're made in the same with the same regularity they were supposed to be made originally in the same amounts there's no change in that from flip that around to the other point of view which would be when an insurance company factors or commutes its own product there is a change in the frequency of payments right uh, I think that's that's one of the takeaways I had from Mr. Woods article was there is this inherent distinction and sort of as common sense indicated to me uh, a while ago um, 
as he says, I believe his terminology is it is not prudent to engage in this. Yeah. Uh, Rob is is uh, uh, the I master of understatement. Well, I think he's yeah. a typical conservative <laughs> tax guy, as best I can read it. But uh, I read that as being this is a dangerous, dangerous ground right. that people probably ought not to be involved in uh, because it does challenge the tax. Uh, status of these structured settlements. Right. Well, let's let's kind of take a, a moment too. I know there's been uh, a lot of commentary by different people in the uh, blog community and the uh, settlement community that this is somehow this great apocalyptic uh, event and that this is uh, somehow a threat to the foundational aspects of the structured settlement industry. Uh, in your opinion, and again, I'll share my opinion. I I don't view that. Uh, I feel that what uh, Rob has essentially done with this, uh, you know, this commentary is take a look at the distinction between factoring and between commutation. And uh, I believe, in my opinion, it, it is a thinly veiled suggestion that the, uh, uh, the insurance companies, the financial institutions that are engaged in this may want to take the prudent step of going and getting a revenue ruling. Uh, you know, go get some, some definition and clarity on this before they actively engage in it because we do have a factoring market already in place that, that isn't implicated by this. Uh, do, I mean, do you see this as some, and again, I, I think I probably already know your answer, but is this a foundational attack on Section 130? Uh, no, I don't think so. The, to me, there's even an easier answer than uh, trying to obtain a revenue ruling or a private letter ruling, and the easy answer is to not do it. Right. Uh, as you suggested, there is a, a vibrant uh, and very regulated marketplace called factoring right. uh, where third parties are, are able to step in and buy this. And it's very clear from the Internal Revenue Code that there is no challenge when there's a, a legitimate third party factoring transaction under mm -hmm. 5891. There is no challenge to the original tax status under 130, and that's tax status for the issuer, the obligor, and the annuitant. Right. Uh, all that is preserved and, and to, to look at the, the simple fact that when an insurance company attempts to do it themselves, it does uh, put into question all those tax statuses. Absolutely. Uh, I, I don't see why they would choose to engage in that. Um, and, but whether or not this is apocalyptic or this is, this is going to spell the end of uh, structured settlements, I simply don't see that. I don't know why anyone would, to be honest with you, since it appears to me that we're talking about you know, one somewhat of an aberration um, by a couple of, of really just a couple, maybe two or three insurance yes, companies. Yeah. Uh, I don't see it. Matt, thanks for joining us here today. Uh, I really appreciate your input on this. Uh, we've had a, uh, uh, I, I don't think our discussions are ever riveting, but I think they're, they're, <laughs> they're, always, uh, they're always interesting to the people who are in our, our business and, and do what we do. Uh, this is part of our ongoing series of both video and audio podcasts we do on the Settlement Channel and the Legal Broadcast Network. And uh, the people who are coming to the Settlement Channel uh, as well as to the uh, Factoring Channel and Settlement Capital's blog are going to see a steadily increasing uh, kind of stack of video podcasts, the audio podcast, uh, some prolific uh, written commentary, just all the resources that people need and are looking for. Uh, in this business. So I encourage you to visit our websites. Uh, you can find Matt at uh, www.setcap, that's S-E-T-C-A-P cap.com, or you can find him, just go to the front page of the Legal Broadcast Network and you'll be able to click on their uh, button, you know, just for the same place you find uh, the Settlement Channel, and uh, it'll click right through their website and you'll be able to find all the commentary and information that you're looking for. So thank you again for joining us here in Scottsdale. Look forward to talking to you and speaking with you again in the future.